Hey YouTube, welcome back to my TypeScript series. In this video, we'll be going over enums in TypeScript. So an enum is a set of named constants which are mapped to a unique set of values. They are essential for readability and clean code because they allow you to represent state cleanly by limiting the number of distinct cases the state can be. So let's write some vanilla JavaScript first to show you where enums are useful. So let's say I have a function foo and I return, or not, I don't return, I take in a school and basically the way I want to model a school is I have a few, few schools, let's say I have Waterloo, I have Harvard, Stanford, and Berkeley. I can map these these constants to to values in my program. So then, when someone calls this function, they have to use this specific mapping to represent the type of school they want to pass in. So then, I will take in a number, and then based off that number, I can figure out what school the caller has passed. So let's say I pass in one for Waterloo. And in this function, I can have a switch statement on school. And if it's one, then I know that we're in the Waterloo case. And if we're having school to be two, then we know that we're in the Harvard case, and so on. The problem with this is that, again, there is no type safety. There is no, nothing preventing me from passing in something that's not in the mapping. So, you know, negative number, number that's outside the range. And because of this, in JavaScript, we have to catch those cases and potentially throw so then the, uh, so then at runtime, this code properly bugs out. So it would be better if the caller of the function knew at compile time the correct values to pass in to the function. And the solution to this problem are enums. The way we create enums in TypeScript is with the enum keyword, followed by the name of the enum. And then we have the members of enum. So let's say this is schools. And we can initialize the first member to have a value of one and then if we hover over the enum member, we see that school.waterloo is one. And then every member following that that initialization will be auto-incremented. So we see Harvard has the value of two, Stanford with three, and Berkeley with four. And this is a numeric enum. If you're coming from other languages, you'll probably be familiar with these in the sense that just numbers can be assigned to the instances of the enum. We can also leave off the initializer, and then the first number will be initialized to zero, and then one, two, and then so on. So the whole benefit with enums, going back to the previous example, is if I have a function foo, and I want to take in a school, then I know that I can use the enum type to represent that parameter. So if I have a function uh, that takes a parameter school, then when I call it, I'm going to have to pass in a specific member of the enum. And the way we access that is with the dot. Um, and you can see there's Harvard, there's Waterloo. So I can pass in Waterloo. And if I make a specific typo, we see that this Waterloo does not exist on the type of school. And to show you that at the end of the day, these members actually map to numbers in a numeric enum, let's school.stanford. Let's go to our terminal and compile this. And then run the JS with node. And we get the value 2, which is what we expect to be the Stanford to be 2. So this is a numeric enum, but TypeScript also supports string enums. Instead of mapping members to numbers, we can map them to strings.
The benefit with string enums is that they're easier to debug. Instead of printing numbers, they will actually print string values. So let's compile that and run it again. And as you can see, we get the value Stanford. Because of this, when using enums, I always tend to use string enums because we can see what we're working with in terms of values. Also, in case you were wondering, enums can be heterogeneous. So we can have a mix of string and number numbers. So we can have something like this. And if we log out Stanford and then we log out school.berkeley, we will see that their types or their values will get be different. So one in Berkeley. However, there's no reason for you to do this. There's not much use case, so don't do this. The last thing that I wanted to show you is something called constant enums and a concept called reverse mapping. So TypeScript also provides a feature called constant enums and they boost the performance of our code. For example, if we had school and we had our typical values that we've been working with, Stanford and Berkeley, then if we log the value of school.waterloo, we're going to get one. And we can also do the reverse. We can we can do the reverse mapping. So we can print the value, the member of the of the enum school that has the value one, and this will print Waterloo. Let's compile this code and then run the JS. And we can see that the first line of output is one and the second line is Waterloo. And if we look into the compiled JS, this is what the enum compiles to. This is an object where we set the object of the members to the values. But then what this produces is the actual value that we assign school at Waterloo. So then this JavaScript, this produces the value one. And then we also set one back to Waterloo. So we have this reverse mapping that we have. However, if you're not doing anything dynamic where you need to do any, any reverse mapping lookups, you should actually change your enum to a constant enum. And what this does is TypeScript, as you can see, already is flagging an error. It prevents you from dynamically looking up values back to members. So a constant enum member can only be accessed using a string literal. To see what I mean, let's compile this again. And if we look at the compiled code, we actually see that there is no more mapping. What it does is at compile time, it converts your enums to just the values. So you can't really do anything dynamically with it. So if you're not using your enums dynamically, then you should use const to get a nice perf performance boost with your code.